Romans chapter 7, and it's one long letter. letter. In, the, in the book of Acts is where the paragraphs stop. There are no paragraph markings from Romans on. So we're talking about one. Now, listen, I'm not saying the chapter markings are not, shouldn't be here. There are great things in the verses. But what we're just, know ye not. So what we're going is what we picked off last time. We're sinners. We got a main theme that, that Paul's going through Romans. We're sinners. We're not under the law. The law shows we are sinners. We are saved by believing and by faith. Know ye not, brethren. So this is written to save people. For I speak to them that know the law. So you're to study the Old Testament. That goes as good as 2016. Some people just only Paul line epistles. That, that's foolish. Because what do you do? I did, oh, only what Paul says. Well, for those that know the law. Well, how can you know the law if you don't read the other books? How that the law has dominion over man as long as he liveth. So when a man dies, there's no more law. For the woman which has a husband is bound by law to her husband, so as long he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. Now what Paul's going to do, he references many times our relationship to Jesus Christ as a relationship of a husband and wife. Now what he's going to do, he's going to take the relationship of a marriage to the law. So then if while her husband liveth, she be married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Now, we read in the previous chapter, our flesh sins. Our flesh is to be buried. It was to be buried when we were baptized. And what he's saying, listen, if our flesh is dead, then you're not under the law. That law passed when you buried your flesh in the grave. Now, if you're unsaved and, you, and, you're, and your flesh is moving about, doing whatever it wants to do, then you're under the law. But once you became saved and that flesh died, as we read in chapter 6, you're no longer under the law. <clears throat> so anybody that comes back, you know, you're saved but has to do the law, that's a violation. Wherefore, my brethren, brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ. I am not under the law. That is not my salvation. The law wasn't nailed to the cross. The body of Jesus Christ was nailed to the cross. The body of Jesus Christ was put in the tomb. The body of Jesus Christ was gone the third day. That ye should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring fruit, forth fruit unto God. We're the bride of Christ. And that's a that's a profound statement throughout the throughout the New Testament. We are the bride of Jesus Christ. We are now married to him. We're not married to the law. For when we yeah, for when we were in the flesh lost Flesh doing whatever it wants. It's alive. It's well. It's kicking. The motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. So anything a lost man, everybody produces fruit. Even Satan produces fruit. What's the fruit? Is it dead fruit or is it living fruit? But now we are delivered from the law. Is, is it more simple? Is it clear? That being dead wherein we were held, chapter 6, that we should serve the newness of spirit, that new man, that new creature, the Holy Spirit is dwelling in us, and not in the oldness of the letter, the Old Testament. What shall we say then? I like Paul when he asks these questions and he answers himself. Is the law sin? God forbid. Nay, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, 
except the law had said, thou shalt not covet. <clears throat> Exodus 20, 17. Well, look at that. Lust is coveting. Coveting is lust. Paul says, listen, there's a charge of lust. How do I get the charge of lust? By the Bible saying, thou shalt not covet. That tells you. That tells you, guess what? You've gone against God. Yeah, in some ways you are to preach the law to unsaved people. To show them what their sins are. But sin, but not to teach the law as salvation, but sin taketh occasion by the commandment, wrought in me all manner of confucianism, that's lust, unlawful, irregular desire of sexual pleasures, and appetite for the worldly good. For without the law, sin was dead. All right? Noah had no idea that too much fermented grape juice was going to make him intoxicated. Cain had no idea that killing his brother would have been a serious offense by God. That law that God spoke in Exodus 20 to those Jews that say, you're my people. I'm going to spell something out with you that you're going to take from, from this mountain, Sinai, to the promised land that's going to be put in the Bible, the 66 books. I'm going to tell you guys what sin is. And I know you can't do it. My son can do it, but you can't do it. But I'm going to show you the sole purpose that you're a sinner. You can't, they couldn't even believe this, obey the six days and one day off. For I was alive without the law once. But when the commandment came, sin revived and I died. At the time in Paul's life, he's young, he's just going about, you know, breaking windows, whatever, you know, kicking a cat, stuff like that. He's going, and one day, his minister got up in the synagogue or something and he preached a message to him. Paul, like, whoa, wait a minute. I've done that. I'm guilty. That day when when Mrs. Paul caught Paul taking things out of the cookie jar, when he's already told that he wasn't supposed to take cookies, aha, he's in trouble. He knew. Maybe that first cookie, he, you know, I don't know it's anything wrong with it. But when you've been told by mother, it's no cookies. So where's the law on that? Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt honor thy mother and father. You're guilty twice, Paul, or anybody who does that. The law is to make you, sin has come alive, and guess what? Now you're accountable. When you get somebody to realize, hey, yeah, I stole the pen, or I steal paper from work, well, thou shalt not steal. You're guilty. You are a thief. I don't care if you stole one piece of paper without asking. You're a thief. One lie. You tell one lie. Thou shalt not bear false witness. If you look at a television show, oh, I got to have that. That's coveting. That's lust. You are a sinner. The commandment which was ordained to life, I found to be unto death. Disobedience brings death. Adam could have had life had he listened to God. And what those people don't realize, and what people don't like is when you have a ministry where you're witnessing to them about Jesus Christ. What they don't like is your point in their sin fully exposed naked before all the world. And they enjoy their sin. And they don't want you to preach against their sin. You can preach about someone else's sin, but don't preach against their sin. Because now they're accountable to God. For sin taketh occasion by the commandment. Deceive me. And by it, it slew me. The wages of sin is death. <clears throat> when I found out I sinned. Now, I don't know. I can't I can't go back to how early I was a child. But there was a time that and I can remember my relationship with God as a young child. My conscience worked good. But I knew from mom things were wrong. I wasn't supposed to do that. I wasn't supposed to do this. But when I had a man open up a Bible to me and say, hey, you done this? Uh-oh. 
Now it's not against my mother. Now it's not against my grandparents. It's not against my brother. It's not against my boss. It's against God. The law shows you stand guilty before God. And guess what? You're dead. It's not you're going to die. I mean, let, let me go real quick to John chapter 3 and read something to you. It's amazing. You're already dead once you know. John chapter 3. Let me read something right here already. You're already in hell. You're death in, in hell. Uh, I'm trying to get this. This doesn't match my street preaching Bible. Verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not on uh, but he that believeth not is condemned already because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And when you stand on the street corner, when you go knocking on their door and tell them, hey, you're a sinner and you have sinned against God, you make them open. You've killed them. And Paul says, I planted Paulus water. You may be planting a dead seed already and coming along, putting a little water on it. Wherefore, the law is holy. Look at that. And the commandment holy. And just. And good. That's the attitude of God. You know what God in the law tells you? They're great. They're holy. They're wonderful. You are not. Imagine someone saying they're going to go to heaven because they're good. Are you God good? Are you good as God? Was then that which is good made deaf unto me? God forbid. But sin, that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that, that sin by the commandment might become exceedingly sinful. The law shows that you're a sinner. The law shows you you're going to die. Sin kills. Not the law. The wages of sin is death. Not the law. The wages of the law is death. All the law does is reveal to you who you are in the eyes of God. For we know that the law is spiritual. But I am carnal. There's that flesh. Sold under sin. Now Paul's going to tell you about the, the apocalypse of the zombie Christian. Paul had a trouble with the zombie Christian uh, we did last night or the other night. Here's Paul's problem with the dead body coming out of the grave, right? For that which I do, I allow not. There's the flesh. For what I would, what he wants to do, that do I not. But what I hate, that I do. There's a flesh coming up. There's a conflict. That flesh keeps coming out of the grave. And you end up doing more for that flesh than you do spiritually. If then I do that which I would not, I could set unto the law that is good. I look at the law and say, yep, that's wrong. That's a sin. Now then, it is no more that I do it, but sin that dwelleth in me, because I'm a new creature, I'm a new soul, I'm a new spirit. That stupid flesh should have been buried. What? For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Imagine how much money is spent on cosmetics. Put that on every cosmetic thing they've got. Lipstick, eyelash, and all that. I can think of the words of Martha. Four days, he stinketh, Lord. I've been sick for the last couple days. My wife come in the bedroom. Phew, you stink. It's not like you, you started to gurgitate and all that. I said decompose. Decompose. Well, that's what your flesh does. And Paul says that flesh is rotten. And there is a zombie apocalypse. It's every day that flesh comes out of the grave to say, I want, I want, I want. And sometimes you give, you give. And sometimes, you know, 
oh, I want to get that guy a gospel track. Oh, he's, he looks mean. Don't give him a gospel track. I fall in that category. So I fall on the same line as Paul. I do things I don't want to do. I do them. I don't do things I, I want to do. <coughs> Dwell <coughs> no good thing. For to will is present with me. Oh, I want to do right. But how to form that which is good, I find not. Look at Paul saying that. To overcome this flesh. It's almost impossible. And yet the Bible says it's dead. And it's living. For the good that I would, I do not. But the evil which I would not, that I do. Paul, you bad boy. No, me bad boy, because I do that. How dare I pick on Paul? Now, if I do that, I would. I'm reading this very carefully. Now, if I do that, I would not. It is no more that I do it, that I do it, but sin that dwells in me. It's, it's that flesh. But in the eyes of God, I'm his son. My soul doesn't sin. That flesh does. I got to put that, that flesh under the blood and put it back in the dirt. But that's what the sin that dwells in me, it, it's in you. It's in your flesh. It's part of you. That's part of your battle. You're not going to go take on Satan and all that. You're going to take on your flesh every day you wake up. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. And if you don't know what that verse is as a Christian, you haven't lived long. You have not grown. I have, that verse has probably not happened in my journey to churches in the world. I say world now, no more America. I've seen so many these these bands are playing in, in foreign lands now. I find... Then a law that when I would do good, evil is present me. Well, what's that law? Thou shalt not bear false witness in that moment that you give an opportunity. Oh, I didn't do it. Oh, the law told me I, I was supposed to speak the truth. And I didn't. I delight in the law of God, your spirit, not your flesh, after the inward man. See? You know why those people hate you when you go witnessing to them? Because their flesh is screaming. And God down in the deepest of the heart, the Holy Spirit saying, listen to them. Listen to them. But I see another law in my members. That's your body. Warring against the law of my mind. Ooh, there's mind. Oh, the Bible does know the difference between mind and heart. This is your brain. And bring me into captivity... To the law of sin which is in my members your whole body is corrupted you know what you know how you know that open up any grave that's been in the ground for about 10 years and see how well it's been corrupted that's martha again he's been in there four days he stinketh you're a stinking rotten sinner your flesh is you'll be absent from the body present with the lord your soul or they bury you and you wake up in hell but that flesh lord tarries will rot <clears throat> oh, wretched men that I am. Oh, you imagine, well, you imagine what kind of message Paul would get that from messages today in churches? If he got up there, oh, wretched men that I am. Oh, Paul, come on. You, you got to have more respect in yourself and all that. Wretched is such a bad word. Who shall deliver me from the body of this? Day? What is going to get me to victory over this stupid sinning? What is going to get me the victory over this body that comes out of the grave? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. See that? No law. So then with the mind, there's the mind, not the heart. I myself serve the law of God. I want to do right. I'm thinking about doing right. I want to do right. But with the flesh... The law of sin. Give me, give me. I want, I want, I want. It's bad for you. I don't care. I want it. I'm dead anyway. What do I care? 